Hi, my name is Charlie. I'm an amateur astronomer living in the Boston area. In August of 2017, I was privileged to witness the Great American Eclipse. This video is going to talk about the observations we've made during the eclipse, where we were, and what we saw. This eclipse was the first in nearly a century to completely traverse the United States. Although there have been other eclipses occurring during the States, I witnessed one in 1970 that came up the East Coast. Didn't cover the entire country, however. Our travel plan was to get to the middle of the country, then decide whether to go east or west to find a site. As it turned out, we got as far as St. Louis, at which time the weather looked poor for continuing west. So we ended up in eastern Tennessee, in a place that we were very lucky to find. I'll talk more about that in the video of the journey. Our locale was an idyllic site for the eclipse. Here's a view taken the morning of the eclipse. This is Baxter, Tennessee. We were on a 30-acre farm that the proprietor opened for camping and viewing the eclipse. About a dozen parties camped out the night before. We had very encouraging weather. A few days preceding were humid with clear mornings and cloud buildup during the midday, followed by clearing again in the evening. Up on the hill near the road, as the campers and later arrivals from the surroundings joined us, the group swelled to about a couple of hundred people. We had selected a viewing area the night before, making pole star sightings to orient the scope for tracking. There were very few observers with telescopes. Mine was probably the only automated instrument. I used an ioptron mount with an 80 millimeter F6 APO. The farmer operated a fruit stand near the site. He did a good business that day. The sky near eclipse time, as you can see, slight cirrus in the west, and there was a large bank of cumulus in the east, but they were moving off and they presented no danger to us. The eclipse begins with an inauspicious first contact as the moon begins to intrude on the sun. The moon's a big rock and the profile edge is a sharp black line, whereas the sun, which is a big ball of gas, presents a slightly fuzzy edge. This condition is known as limb darkening. Several small clouds that were part of the midday buildup drifted over us during the partial phases. As the eclipse progressed, the temperature dropped, and these clouds slowly disappeared. By the time totality approached, they were all gone. There were several sunspot groups visible. This grouping near the edge was of particular interest. Here's a video from the Solar Dynamics Observatory of that group of spots rotating into view. The appearance in calcium light shows why they were of interest. Spots are the source of surface disturbances, and we hope we can see prominences at that position during totality. Partial phases progressed. Once again, we see the contrast between the moon's sharp edge and the sun's fuzzy edge. Partial phases last about an hour and a half. The initial excitement of first contact diminishes during this long interval, then builds as totality approaches. It isn't until the final few minutes that one notices a strange dimming of the light. This stationary movie shows the darkening of the sky in the direction of the approach of the moon's shadow, with just about a minute to go. The surroundings become somewhat eerie, not at all like the effect of a cloud passing. 
As the shadow closes in, the horizon displays a strange orange glow, not unlike a sunset, as we view the light of the sky beyond the moon's shadow. The final seconds before totality are the most dramatic, with the arc of the crescent sun diminishing in length and finally breaking up into Bailey's beads as the bright limb disappears between the mountains on the moon's edge. The appearance of totality is a strong emotional experience, with observers spontaneously reacting to the sight. The unrestrained joy of the moment is one of the constant elements in all the eclipses I've seen. A perimeter sweep shows the orange circular sunset phenomenon, the daylight outside the shadow, 30 miles away in all directions. I attempted a curious observation at this point. The moon seems to be a black circle, but is actually illuminated by the light from the earth. I wondered, can I see the moon's surface in, a, in that black circle? The resulting graphic is not great here, but visually there was a detection of light and dark features corresponding to the Mara and cratering, light and dark areas on the moon. The most stunning feature in totality is the corona, a million degree gas envelope reaching out in all directions from the sun's surface. Touring the perimeter with my telescope, we see here some of the pink prominences shooting up from the surface much cooler than the bright solar surface and not visible outside of an eclipse except in hydrogen alpha light. The corona, glowing in a bluish-white light, appears full of structure with spikes and lines following the magnetic field of the sun. This particular prominence was attractive, arcing up thousands of miles. It's probably twice the size of the Earth. Here's another group of flames Prominences are in constant motion, but their size and distance makes them seem stationary. The corona extends out a million miles or more. Here we see the north pole of the sun, as identified by the corona following the magnetic field lines. Two minutes and 40 seconds goes much too quickly. This eclipse ends as they all must do, with the reappearance of the bright photosphere. The diamond ring effect appears briefly before the corona is overpowered by the returning sun. Here you also see the thin pink layer called the chromosphere, the upper atmosphere of the sun. Here's a movie of the chromosphere in hydrogen alpha light, the thin ring surrounding the bright surface much lower temperature than either the photosphere or the corona. And once again, daylight returns to the environment. Partial phases once again return in reverse order, but these are much less interesting than before. Climax is over, and an hour and a half later, by the time of last contact, everyone has left the scene. I'll be making other videos, one detailing the 3,000-mile journey we took to see this eclipse, and one of the experience of this relatively rare and profoundly spiritual event. Keep checking my channel. So long for now.